everyone and welcome back on a new video from CG Blast channel. So today I'm here with a brand new tutorial for junior animators on how to animate um, a different weight on a bouncing ball. So uh, I have you here right now two different spheres. Uh, one is called ball one, another one is called ball two and these two balls have the exact same sides and so and also color as you can see it's all in the scale of gray uh, regarding the color all around this shot uh, just because uh, I don't want to influence anybody with the uh, actual color or sides of a ball so uh, right now uh, I prefer having two balls that, that are exactly the same so that we're gonna understand how to make two balls feel different in weight uh, animating them in the graph editor so first of all I want to animate um, the ball on the left which is our ball one and I will try to give uh, this ball uh, a weight uh, uh, that it's gonna be different from the other ball so at the end of this tutorial you're gonna be judging for you, uh, for your point of view, which ball is heavier and which ball is lighter. Okay, so let's start from you know immediately um, to start putting some keys in the uh, on the timeline. So the first thing that I want to uh, share with you is that according to the kind uh, of shot that I personally have, um, sometimes I tend to put keys on step mode so I go into preferences animation and I go here and set everything to clamped and step mode this is basically done uh, when you have some poses uh, in like you know a character uh, with some poses you, you want to build your poses first and then put them on the timeline and try to you know stage um, a sort of sort kind of timing you know, um, and then later on you go and create some spacing with the in-betweens and breakdowns. But these are things a little bit more complicated. So for this tutorial, I would like to work directly into auto mode, auto tangent, and see a little bit what happens. And then we're going to go straight into the, the graph editor and work a little bit uh, around uh, the keys. So let's put some keys on here. So we have our first key on frame one. Then I want to go, let's say, on frame 12. Of course, we can change. Let's put it on zero. What happens? No, it's too much. Okay, well, let's say we can put it according to the size of the sphere. Let's put it on 1.5. Yeah, okay. So it's going to touch in the ground. We'll have the translate one and one uh, the translate y on 1.5. Then we're gonna go to frame. Let's say let's start counting a little bit. So this is 12. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're gonna go up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll just go randomly. And then put six, put it here, six frames again, 1.5, and we're gonna go a little bit this way for a little bit and try to, you know, um, you know, we started from an average, you know, let's say we have here eight frames and then eight, eight frames again to go back down, then six. Now we're gonna go, let's say, to four. Bring it up. Let's say now one, two, three. Let's say three. And then one, two. Okay, press a little bit up, 
And there you go. So we have our first ball. Okay. So if we just play the animation like I just did, we don't really feel that this ball is like, you know, it's not believable, right? This is a thing we saw also on the other kind of tutorials because the the keys on, I mean, the tangents on the translate Y are so smooth that you can see here. Uh, and this is not giving us a sense of gravity and especially the, the sense that the ball is actually touching the ground and then boom, uh, going up again. So the way that we can change this and fix this is like we always do, taking the tangents where the ball is actually touching the ground, which are these ones, and we put it on linear, okay? And then one of the things that I like doing is breaking the tangents so that I can, so that I can model, um, you know, these um, keys, you know, the, the way I want it. But first of all, I wanna put this keys up here, the top keys, when the actual ball is on the, in the air, I wanna put it on flat, okay? So now what I wanna do is start modeling like I usually do, in a way that I like the shapes. So it's a nice arc. This is what we need to tend doing every time. Okay, so if we have something like this, okay, you can see that this part is not similar to the other one. So we need to, whoops, we need to grab it and try to make it symmetrical. This is really important. Let me go here, just this ones. And I see that maybe we can push this up a little bit. Because I want to try to imagine and have an imaginary line that goes from here to here, and that the, these keys should touch, you know, that imaginary line. So I think that I should go like this, and then like this. Of course, I'm really rushing things right now just to not make this tutorial too long in length, you know. So here we go. All right, and we can keep this one as they are. So if we go here and we play the animation, okay, so we have this ball. It's pretty nice, okay? And what I wanna do actually is, you know, just bring up the first key just a little bit. I like the idea of having the ball a, bit, a little bit higher. Okay. So it's not bad at all. Okay. And so we, we have this first ball done. Now we're gonna be animating actually this second one. And I'll go pretty fast without explaining much what I'm doing. So just to see what you guys may think, okay? And um, of course, I'll not put the, I mean, I'm not gonna put the same amount of keys that I did uh, here. Maybe there are gonna be more keys on the timeline or maybe less, but you're gonna see it in the end and, and tell me what you think in the comments below eventually. So here we go, so let's put the ball up here, the same height. And let's make the two balls touch the ground at the same time.
I did my keys, I already put my keys. So let's go in the graph editor and do this the same exact what I've did before. Try to put my keys like this. Take the up keys. Put it to flat. And take the bottom ones, put them linear and cut them like this. And also in this case, I see that the weight, the, the tangents are not weighted. So if I just try to model the, the shape here, I can only rotate, you know, this part of the tangent, but I want to model it in a way that it's more, you know, that I can do whatever I want with it. So I'm going to go here and say weighted tangent. So here you go, I can scale and rotate also the, the shape of the tangents now. Okay. Here we go. So now, if I play the animation, we still see that there's something wrong. Maybe I forgot a tangent. Let's just check pretty quickly. Yes, I forgot this one. Okay. And voila. So we can see that the two balls are coming down at the same time, okay? But actually when, so they're both touching the ground at frame 12, okay? But then the ball on the right seems to be more stuck on the ground. So we, we just see a couple of bounces, that's not much, and we, for this reason, we are going to assume that the uh, the ball on the right has more weight, right? Even if even just a little bit more. So this principle can be applied to eventually, you know, give the sense that maybe the ball on the left has um, a different weight, so the gravity acts uh, acts uh, differently, you know, um, and uh, according to you know the weight of the, uh, the weight that an object uh, may have in your shot. So of course Maya is a 3D software so we, we cannot emulate animations with weight. Uh, we can use of course some dynamics. Um, we have a section where in the FX control we can go here and play or maybe not. I mean I'm, I'm not used to create, um, um, to generate you know uh, FX or uh, you know gravity into Maya but uh, there are some tools uh, in order to do this, uh, but I personally uh, like the idea of, the idea of um, you know simulating you know giving the illusion of gravity into you know in an animation like this one. So this is a pretty short animation uh, that you know explains you the process on how to you know treat uh, you know different weight um, objects. In this case, simple balls. So that's not much. And of course, we can eventually have some contrast, like eventually giving uh, the uh, the big ball. Uh, I mean, the ball on the, on the left, maybe give it uh, a bigger size, you know, so that, so that we can eventually assume that it's you know heavier, and then eventually uh, the the ball on the right give it um, a smaller size. So eventually, we can think that the ball on the right is um, lighter because it's smaller. Uh, but eventually sometimes this kind of contrast is is great. I mean, we can see balls that are small like a bowling ball, for instance. They are so heavy and, and are so small, you know, and eventually there are some balls like a beach ball, uh, you know, that are really big and they are so, so light uh, because there are there's air inside of them, you know, so we can treat and eventually, you know, put some texture and size them in a different way. I'm not going to do it right now to not, 
you know extend the video um, too much. Uh, so this is a really basic tutorial on how to, to treat two objects in order to give them a different weight. So this is an, a really simple tutorial, but you can understand how much is important to understand to give different weights to things, uh, but especially given weight. So this is uh, really important. So um, if we are de dealing with a ball uh, or any other kind of objects or also characters, they may have different kind of weight. So this is going to be something that we'll, we'll see in the future eventually, so in other tutorials. So I hope you liked this little explanation. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and eventually share this, these tutorials for, uh, with your friends who are eventually in need of a little bit of help because they, they, they maybe are willing to, they're willing to, uh, they're willing to learn animation, that's their dream job. So these are the basics. So this tutorial, like other ones that I already did in the past, um, check them out. And like I said, don't forget to, to subscribe and let me know your, your thoughts in the comments below. So uh, thanks for watching again. Hope to hear from you soon and enjoy. Bye.